We're at Waterfest today. Um, Waterfest has been going on at Lake Phelan for about 14 years now. Um, it's all about getting the community out um, to experience, you know, not only Lake Phelan, but just to be in more in touch with um, the water bodies. A lot of fun activities. There's paddle boarding, kayaking, canoeing, um, pontoon rides, uh, rock climbing wall. Um, just a lot of fun events to get kids out playing and involved in nature. Um, so I'm a master's student at the University of Minnesota in the Conservation Biology Graduate Program. Um, and we work on common carp research at, with Peter Sorensen's lab at the university. Common carp are an invasive carp. Uh, they're not on the radar as much as, say, the silver carp, the ones that jump out of the river, or the big head carp. But they are invasive. They're originally from Eurasia. And they've been in Minnesota for about 100 years now. Uh, if they get in, we'll cause a great deal of problems with uh, um, the food web because they eat very low down in the food web and then of course a uh, big issue now are zebra mussels which are rapidly uh, threatening to spread across uh, the lakes of, of Minnesota which are also from Eurasia. A number of these are from the same area as common carp. As a matter of fact. Not all but most. I worked on this for the city of North St. Paul and we wanted to create a training program that um, Individual homeowners could come and see if they had ash trees on their property. So we have ways to identify ash trees here and then also um, be able to identify the signs and symptoms of emerald ash borer. The devastation that the emerald ash borer can cause will be great not only in ecosystems but also in properties and homes as well. My name is Emily Onifer and I'm with H2O for Life. We're a nonprofit based in White Bear Lake, Minnesota, and we partner schools here in the United States with schools in developing parts of the world that don't have access to water. Every 15 seconds, a child dies from the lack of access to clean water. Women and children can spend up to 60% of each day walking to collect water. Children walk an average of six kilometers a day to gather water for their families, making it hard for them to attend school. They, therefore, lack the education needed to move forward. Do education and fundraising for the schools in the developing countries, and they install water, sanitation, and hygiene projects in their partner schools. Um, and today we have gallons of water that people can use to put on their head and walk to simulate the walk that girls in developing countries have to do for water every day. My name is Taylor. I'm the Group Programs Coordinator at Vertical Endeavors. Um, I run all of the groups and events that come through Vertical Endeavors St. Paul. We do a lot of birthday parties, camps, uh, we do team, and then we also do adult events like climbing lessons. We do outdoor events at Taylor's Falls or the North Shore. Um, today we're here just kind of representing our company and making sure that people have the information that they need. We do ladies night, family night, we have a lot of stuff. Or you can just come in and climb for the day. Director of the Lee and Rose Warner Nature Center. We're the owners of the Water Strider, which is a solar powered pontoon boat. As far as we know, the Water Strider is the oldest solar pontoon boat in the country. It was uh, developed in the 1990s by a volunteer at the Nature Center. It's been a continuous operation since then, since then almost uh, 20 years. And we also think it might be the very first solar powered, powered pontoon boat um, in the country, if not in the in the world. It seats about 16 people, it depends on the total weight of the passengers on the boat, but generally it's about 16 passengers on the boat. It also has a, a center 
um, the section that can be taken out so viewers can actually look down into the lake, much like looking into a glass bottom boat, so we can view what's happening on the water.